I'm a goldsmith and this project started with a simple idea. What kind of engagement ring would I make for Taylor Swift? Well, I'll show you. Now, of course, this challenge is just for fun. I really wish Taylor nothing but health and happiness, regardless of her marital status. What do Beyonce, Paris Hilton, J-Lo, Jackie Kennedy, and Grace Kelly all have in common? Besides the fact that they are all, you know, iconic women. All of these women have or had emerald cut diamonds for engagement rings. These are rectangular in shape with the faceting resembling steps when viewed from above. It's a very elegant, iconic, and timeless look. So obviously, I think it's a great fit for Taylor. I contacted my diamond dealer and ordered the largest emerald cut diamond I have ever possessed, coming in at 10.02 carats. All right, I don't want this to come across as too sales pitchy, but it is important to note that this is a lab-grown diamond. Now, I am absolutely a huge fan of these. They are 100% chemically and visually identical to those mined in the earth. Like, literally, you can't tell the difference. You have to use special technology in order to see that. I think it could be really on brand for Taylor. And this is still a $20,000 diamond. If you were to buy a mined diamond of this size, you're probably looking somewhere over a half a million dollars. I'm going to be designing Taylor's ring in CAD, and I absolutely love this software, especially when I don't know exactly how the ring's going to look. This really helps me flesh out my ideas, get creative, and I also get to see what the ring will look like with the real world materials. Like for example, the emerald cut, I can enter in the exact dimensions of the diamond so I can use that in the design. There is one design element I just knew I wanted right away, and that was to turn the diamond on its side. I really love this look for an emerald cut. I think it's a unique modern twist. For the ring setting, I decided to make a cathedral style solitaire. I spent a lot of time stylizing the curve of the band and the thickness of the gallery rail to make sure the design is both elegant and structurally sound. And once I was happy with the overall shape of the ring, I felt like I needed to elevate it even further by adding some Taylor inspired customization. One thing Taylor is known for are her heart hands. So I thought it'd be really cool to incorporate a heart-shaped diamond into the design. To do this, I flared out one of the sides of the band, just wide enough to accommodate the diamond. For comfortability, the heart will be set down flush into the band. It's a true sentimental and understated accent. In fact, not even everyone would know it's there, which I think is just perfect. Here's a little bit of oopsies. Didn't know there was, oh, wait, there's a little tiny heart on the side. The ring design is complete, and here's a quick overview. First, I want the ring to be in gold. There's something regal and timeless about gold, which I think is a lovely match to Taylor's aesthetic. I just love this design, the horizontally set emerald cut, secured with claw prongs which resemble a split setting. The band itself has a beautiful taper, starting narrow, then widening out to accommodate the heart, then slowly tapering all the way back to narrow again. The ring features an open gallery underneath the diamond to allow a lot of light to pass through. I can't wait to make this a reality, so let's do this. Now that the ring design is complete, I'll add supports to the ring model, which is then exported to my 3D printer. The build platform sinks into the resin tray and the build begins. Four hours later, I have an actualized resin model of the ring. I'll then remove the model from the build platform and give it a bath in isopropyl alcohol and distilled water. The outer supports were for 3D printing purposes and will need to be clipped away. After the bulk has been removed, I'll grab my handy dandy surgeon's knife. Under the microscope, I can cut away any remaining excess resin. Take a trip with me to the yellow bench. This is the land of spruing. If you are unfamiliar with what is going on, this is the beginning stage of a process called lost wax casting. In short, this is the magic that turns this resin ring into a real gold one. Once the ring model is attached to the sprue base, I'll cover and enclose the model with this perforated flask. Now it's time to make our mold. I do this by mixing a predetermined measurement of water and investment powder. The mix is then placed on the investment table and covered with a plastic dome. A vacuum is activated which pulls air bubbles out of the mix. 
After a couple of minutes, I'll pour the investment down into the ring flask, then repeat that same air bubble removal process. I'll top off the flask, then leave it alone for a few hours to cure. You can see the very bottom of our ring model there. The flask is then placed in the burnout oven. And as the temperature ramps up, the resin that was trapped inside of the flask will melt out the bottom, leaving an empty cavity inside of the flask. And spoiler alert, this is where the gold will be poured. The flask is then placed in the vacuum casting chamber. This helps pull the gold down into place when I pour it into the mold. Now, it's casting time. I'm sticking with gold for Taylor, and I'll specifically be using 18 karat gold, which has a rich yellow hue. Firing up my casting torch, the moment has arrived. Sweet, sweet success. I'm always smiling during this part because so much work goes into the casting process that when you finally see that ring in gold and you're holding it in your hand, it's just such a rewarding moment. And you might be thinking, but it looks bad. Well, yeah, it kind of does, for now. It's time to remove that discoloration and clean up the raw casting. I'll start by cutting off the button. This is just the excess gold from the casting, which will be recycled and used for other projects. Now I'll drop the ring into my magnetic tumbler. This machine has thousands of tiny magnetic pins, which will clean up the ring by burnishing the gold. Now we can see that beautiful gold color. The ring then makes its way to my jeweler's bench, and I'll clean it up further by filing the bottom of the shank, then taking a sanding wheel to the outside of the ring. The inner casting supports are then removed, and I'll get to work on cleaning up the inside of the ring. I'll then throw the ring on my mandrel to do a quick roundness check and a size check. I have Taylor at a size five and a quarter, but in actuality, that's uh, my wife's finger size. I'm definitely gonna need her to model this ring later. Hopping over to the polishing machine, I'm going to give this ring a nice pre-polish. I do this because once the big diamond is set in place, it's going to be very hard to polish those hard to reach areas. And now we turn our attention to this beautiful small little heart diamond. This is also lab grown, close to my heart. I will take the ring and clamp it down in my ring vise. I'm going to start by cutting the seats for this heart shaped diamond. push and snap the stone down into place. So you might be wondering how the stone actually will stay in. And the answer to that question is through burnishing a small amount of gold over the top of the heart diamond. Now it's time for the grand finale, the crescendo, the pinnacle, the peak, one diamond to rule them all, the 10 carat emerald. Likewise, I will cut the seats for the corners of the stone. and then set it down into place. And then use pressure to pull the prongs over the stone as well as this hammering tool to press the gold down on the corners. Obviously, I could break this stone at this moment. And even though this is the largest lab-grown diamond I've ever set in a ring, the principles remain the same as if I were setting a one carat. So as long as I don't get into my own head, everything's gonna be just fine. Once the stone is nice and tight, I wanna maintain that really cool claw shape. I will shape the prongs using a small hand file. Over to laser engraving, I will first engrave my logo on the inside of this ring, followed by the 18 karat gold hallmark. And then of course, because this ring is getting its very own YouTube video, I'm also including a small YouTube logo. 
Now it's back to the polishing machine for the final polish. This will truly bring out that beautiful gold color. The ring is then dipped in an ultrasonic cleaner. It's so satisfying to watch the compound come off the ring. We all know Karma is a cat, right? And I do have two cats at home. So because of that, I have to feed them. So I'm gonna put this ring up on my website and we're ready for the reveal. I feel so creatively satisfied from making this ring. When I showed the ring to my wife, her jaw absolutely dropped. When she was wearing it, she said she was surprised at how comfortable the ring was. Thank you to all the Swifties for watching this, and of course, all my regular subscribers. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.